This is a brand new Parmac Mark 8. Maybe has a couple of hours on it. Uh, built into an insulated box to kind of reduce the noise for the milk goat that we keep in the barn here and just otherwise reduce noise. But our plans this year are to do some intensive rotational grazing, uh, mob grazing chickens in their run. They usually get the run of the field and we sell a few eggs here. The addition of fiberglass posts have been going on when the weather was not wet and raining as Seattle is fond of doing. But I want to make some demonstration that we were in the mid-13s back there on the screen I believe. And yesterday I received a premier 12483 chicken enclosure as we intend to uh, graze the chickens behind the animals as well as a 500 foot strand of seven seven wire that is hooked up to the command post here. I just hooked up this switch a little while ago and out here following this lead up from the ground which is PVC across uh, a walkway here up onto those posts and down back to the Parmac is a Zariba single strand galvanized uh, that's about 120 feet or so out here. 125 feet was in their spool and I might have had 10 feet left over somewhere like that. But the curiosities that are presenting themselves here is what I want to show. I have a speed right fault finder and uh, I'm uh, you know, confident of its performance now. It's showing 11.2 at the bottom live end of the switch here. At the top end of the switch it's showing 2.1 which is what's that about? It's supposed to be dead. Um, I have a bus bar system that's been built here to handle lead offs from uh, various kinds of wire uh, ropes and tapes and so on and I show those also demonstrating you know, 2.1 and they're supposed to be dead presently as there is an open switch going on down here. Now I'll go and close the switch and show that now it's Oh, I got myself a shock there. It's a pretty good zap at 11.4, uh, 11.2, 11.6, 11.7, uh, and now instead of 2.1 we're also showing in the 11s on the bus bars. I can make that similar test on several of the locations and always come up with about the same number. So this Zeriba wire is Losing about 2,000 from the barn out here in 120 feet, there must be a lot of ohm number in it. It is not suggested. And as I mentioned, I purchased a 500 foot strand of uh, double insulated seven strand Galvi from Premier that also arrived yesterday. And now you recall it was doing 11.2 over there on the post, 500 feet away on this wire it's going to show us something unusually different. Come on. 13. Thirteen. So where it loses from 13 out uh, at the origin at the Parmac uh, out to the post here it loses 2,000. It somehow is made up again by this strand, but now that we have no traffic and it's quiet, I want you to listen because there's a short in this. That's a sound you may or may not hear, but it's ticking in rhythm with the Parmac. I've laid it up on this half drum because when I first discovered this issue I had the wire simply laying on the ground as you might want to find and use it in that manner leading out to enclosures such as this chicken wire or at some distance as we 
have some possibility of being able to use our neighbor's pasture over here and it's uh, 165 from here to the common fence and another 360 to that far fence next to the school over there. But indeed, uh, that's something we're, we're still discussing and may or may not want to do. The curiosity here is that uh, this 500 foot strand appears to have a short in it and the phenomenon of either building a coil that is generating more juice than is coming into it, some kind of magnetic field that again goes from uh, 13 on the long end of it, 500 feet away to the origin of eleven four from the Parmac. I know I'm reiterating some things here, but as uh, proof in the pudding, it continues to change and again show on the chicken wire. Well, it's dropped just a bit to twelve three, twelve six. Any other wires down here? They all perform live. There's a thirteen again. So I have checked uh, all the wires as a just be sure that everything's working on the vertical. They one two three four five six seven. I guess it's called a twelve because there's twelve horizontal live wires on it. And over at the very end over there, that was. Uh, in my mind the place to check that and they they did come out um, 13 on on all the lines at the time that I checked them there so I'm trying to display uh, an issue here I do have a Zariba tag going off of this line over in the barn that uh, runs to the far corner of the pasture paddock here common paddock we we have uh, four alpaca in there. There is one, that's the corner there, and a, um, a mount over there, and one of those uh, PVC posts is mounted to that corner. And I intend to use it to uh, go the distance uh, out there and do some separations as well as a separation line that goes to the cyclone fence down the way. All of this um, accomplishing the end that we can do some managed grazing instead of letting them nibble everything in sight that they love, the sweet stuff, and leaving behind that that they don't want. One of the issues that we have here that we hope they can somewhat remedy uh, that they nibble on but don't seriously eat is that darker green uh, half halfway to the fence line there is a bulrush that is now down well, three or four or five inches off the ground but can grow up to three feet high and pretty much dominate the uh, sort of wet drainage ground that's going on from the school as I mentioned earlier has a, a large uh, baseball diamond and track and field activity thing going on just in the distance that building is on actually on the other side of the track uh, and a lot of drainage happens down into our pasture here as a result of that uh, that field system. Uh, unfortunately, that's not our barn, but uh, we'd like like it to be. Our barn consists of this tattered window here, which is uh, a steel post building we had constructed two years ago. That's in addition to uh, the barn that was on the premises. So that's the mob grazing approach that we're going with this year and uh, the, the chickens will be real happy to get back into pasture. They've been locked up for maybe six or eight weeks now since we decided you know, we got to do something about our pasture. Hope you enjoy listening. If anyone like to comment on this uh, wiring thing, the, uh, the Tesla fans uh, would maybe approach this with some idea what are, what's happening over here and why uh, why it jumps up like that. It's either especially good wire or it's happening because of the short and in the system or is it indeed uh, so much coil going on there that it just wants to register a sound. Um, don't have any real big clues about it but I'm not fond of using it as intended to be able to run around the pasture. This has been a foggy Saturday and 
Oh, near Seattle, Washington. Hope you enjoy. Thanks for watching.